The question is, are you being brainwashed? Well, to brainwash is to make someone adopt radically different beliefs by using systematic and often forcible pressure. Since the average American is exposed to anywhere between four and 10,000 advertisements and seven and a half hours of media every single day, it would be easy to affect what you buy, what you think, even what you do. Well, today I'm joined by the host of The Drenda Show, as well as her new show, Drenda on Guard, to talk about the lies of the culture and how we can overcome them. Welcome, my wife, Drenda Kasi. Hi, Ann. Good to awesome be here. Awesome <laughs> to have you with us here. Hey, you here know, Gary, there is a the war thing. going on. There is, absolutely. Yes. And there are lies being told by the enemy. He's out to still kill and destroy. And our minds are all being washed, whether we recognize it or not. Absolutely. They're either being washed with the water of the word or they're being washed with the world system. And the world system, uh, you know, I wrote a book called Fight Like Heaven, and uh, it's a cultural guide to living on guard. And one, one of the whole chapters deals with propaganda, media, and lies. And I'm dealing with the fact that we have a problem that truth is not getting out. Yes. Satan is the original tyrant, and he is stealing, killing, and destroying. He does it through lies. He does it through propaganda. He does it through misinformation. And, you know, the truth is what sets people free. But unfortunately, like I share in the book about the different mountains of influence, the enemy has infiltrated all of these mountains, and he's brought lies in them, whether it's children's education, whether it's uh, what's going on in medicine right now, what, what's going on in government and in the media and celebrity yeah. culture, uh, all of these areas, these are influential areas. Uh, you know, even religion, we see churches today that are embracing tolerance over truth and they've embraced lies. It makes me think of the churches in Revelation where Jesus said to the seven churches, uh, I'll spew you out of my mouth or uh, if you don't repent, I'll remove your lampstand, your lie. We have churches that are now waving the flag of pride uh, they have signs out in front of them mm -hmm. about equity and all of these other things, but they don't have the gospel of Jesus Christ. So truth is an issue. It is a big issue. And unfortunately, tolerance has been pushed on kids so much and on even Christians so much that people have backed away from the truth. And as we back away from truth, who's telling the truth anymore? Yeah. Satan's lying. And we give him ground. The more ground we give him, the more he takes. You know, a lot of believers yeah. think, well, if we just give in to this, if we just appease it, if we just tolerate it, then we, they'll play nice. You know, we'll play nice if they'll play nice. That's not how Satan plays. Yeah. He's out to destroy people's lives, and he's using warfare. He's using psychological warfare, uh, lies, uh, infiltrating the society. And unfortunately, we've given up as believers too much territory uh, so the book Fight Like Heaven is about fighting like heaven and bringing heaven back into the influences of these areas, especially as it affects kids. You know I'm passionate about right. that. Right. Well, you know, talking about uh, the economy, talking about where we live, I mean, yes. money makes the world go oh, around, Oh, yes, right? and that's a whole area, too, yeah, I have, didn't even touch. Uh, I know I've looked through your book many times here as we've, you were working on it, and I've, I've just was amazed at how all these things Satan has infiltrated to the depths that we most people have no idea, but if you right. just look at advertising, like we mentioned, the media, what the norm is, is put before you, and it's talking about money. I mean, that's the purpose of advertising, right? To get you uncomfortable or unhappy with what you have, and then show you what you should have, and when you can't afford it, show you how you can borrow money to get yes. it. It's all about slavery and conforming to someone wants you to be conformed to their image, or as I always say, you know, someone wants you in debt. Someone wants you in right, slavery. Right. Well, and debt that's what is this book's slavery. All about. Yeah. And that, you know, in the book, I uncover even in the history of nations how nations were set up to go into debt and mm -hmm. to be borrowers, and then they become slaves. And you talk about it all the time, Gary. So yeah. well, thirty-one trillion dollars in, in debt, debt yes. puts a nation in slavery to the debtors, and then right. they start pulling the strings. And we see that happening right now. Back in the '70s, a man named Klaus Schwab uh, started a plan that originally was a European type of uh, economic Euro, uh, European economic uh, uh, piece. Now it's called the World Economic Forum. And the World Economic Forum put, put leaders 
in position back years and years ago in the 80s and 90s, those leaders today have been trained in Marxism, socialism, a new capitalism, and they're driving a great reset. They're driving a digital oh, yeah. currency. They're driving all of these things to steal people's freedom. So we've borrowed as a nation. America's in great debt, and so are all the other nations. Mm -hmm. And now the one world order is trying to converge. And that's one of the things so shocked me as I was, I knew a lot of this, but as I uh, really researched yeah. more and more, I found out all of these areas, these seven mountains of influence are converging against the Lord. Can you do me a favor? What are the seven mountains? Just for review. The seven here. mountains I mentioned were government, education, medicine, business and um, economics, family, religion, and media, arts, entertainment. So those are there. There are ways that people, they, all of us partake of these things. They're not evil in, of, in and of themselves, right. but when Satan infiltrates them through unrighteousness and through ungodly people, and the church does nothing to push back or to inject the truth, and what's happened is the church got silent when we started being called names. When you say, uh, for, for instance, in the 70s, the women's lib movement, which I was part of, was pushed as the agenda, but it was used to bring abortion in on its heels. So any man, for instance, who would have said, no, abortion is murder, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when abortion was, uh, Roe v. Wade, was de the decision was made uh, in favor and uh, women abortion, in favor of abortion, yeah. most of the nation was against abortion. But they use the women's lib, feminist uh, equality, which sounds great, equality. We all believe in equality. God's word teaches equality. Jesus is the equalizer, right? But what happened is the women's movement was used. If you dare say anything against abortion, you were coming against women. And so it silenced people from speaking up. That, no, this is murder. This is killing children. This is evil. This is horrendous. And we've seen the same thing happen with same-sex marriage, that uh, if you dare say that, no, the Bible says marriage is between a man and a woman, well, then you're coming against, uh, even it was, it was even spun to be coming against races or ethnicities because they tied the LGBTQ agenda to ethnicities and racial equality. They're two different things. Right, right. A skin tone is very different than a person's sexual choices. And the Bible calls it sin. So when the church quits, call, quits calling it sin, when the church backs off, Satan invades these seven mountains. He invades these seven areas and takes them over. And then he silences. And the, the biggest one about, as you started the program, the brainwashing, this is the most dangerous one. Because in the, the enemy can try it's to set up. It's all brainwashing. Yeah, though, the enemy right? can try to set up camp somewhere. But if the church counters it with truth, then it pushes back evil. But when the church is brainwashed or when people are silenced out of fear uh, and they're told tolerance is grace, the Bible says grace teaches us to say no to sin. But when we're told as believers, no, 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 love means tolerance, then that means we have to tolerate every evil. Well, what about evil against children? What about kids that are being brainwashed? And I go into that in the book about the gender-bred uh, curriculum that teaches children, shows them a gender-bred picture and says, you may have been told you were a boy or girl at birth on your birth certificate, but let's look at your attraction. Let's look at your brain. Let's look at your expressions. And this little gender-bred, they use it with kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders, and they're, uh, they're able to pick their new identity. And then they go to the hospital and they say, oh, well, you, need, you need to be put on gender-blocking, uh, you know, gender right, puberty right. drugs and uh, uh, puberty-blocking drugs because you're not a boy or a girl, you're this or that. And then they bring in clergy who put their blessing not on real it. Clergy. They're not clergy that know the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ, but they're bringing in clergy and they're ordaining them basically into a new identity. This is a counterfeit for the born again experience and it's taking children's lives. I know for me, I was confused about how just to get around the hall when I was a little kid at school. I was confused about where's the bathroom, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Now they're taking these little children who are already looking to adults for their identity and they're brainwashing these children and they're telling their parents, the hospitals say we have these gender clinics. I know in our state, six of them, they're all over the United States of America. And these gender clinics are telling parents, look, a, 
you know, a live trans child is better than a dead child. They're basically telling parents, if you don't let them do this surgery, if you don't let them bind their organs, if you don't let them go this full route of this, then these kids are going to commit suicide. But what they're not telling them is 40% of kids who tra transition commit suicide. It's a lie. Again, okay, it's that so brainwashing. There's, there's this lack of truth, right? Yes. And it's changing the culture. Yes. And you and can so, tell I'm passionate about this. Children are being damaged and hurt, and the church is sitting back and letting it happen. Yeah.